Welcome to Pete and Hannah's Watchlist. I'm your host, Pete Mitchell. I'm here with my great co-host, Hannah! Hello, people. Hannah, we're here today for What's Next, the show where we help you figure out what What to to watch watch next. next. On today's show, we are going to review challenges, and I believe you have some news when it regards to challenges. Uh And we're also going to review Abigail. Abigail. But before we begin, let us tell the viewers and the listeners what they should do. Pretty please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Leave a comment down below any of your feedback and any movie you'll be watching this week. Hit the notification button and you'll get great content like this one. Including, we interrupt regular programming where we talked about The Sympathizer. Oh yeah? Yeah. Watch it the second week. It's good. I like it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Robert Dan Jr. playing different characters this week. This week, this week he played a... A Asian studies teacher. Okay. That wasn't Asian, but he's pretending to be Japanese. Okay. He's yeah. like wearing kimonos everywhere, and he's got like a huge <laughs> scar on his stomach. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm very into that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's also playing a CIA agent as well. Mm. So yeah. Now, uh, for those who watched last year, we had a championship belt holder. We updated throughout the year. Well, I announced last week that my championship belt holder was Civil War. Civil War. So that's mine. Hannah hasn't named hers yet, but maybe. 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 Uh, Let us go on to today's show. And the first thing we're going to talk about is Challengers. Challengers. Starring the great Zendaya. Uh, Also Mike Feist. Mike Feist and Josh O'Connor. Now, Mike Feist, um, people might remember him from West Side Story. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. yeah, good Broadway actor. Yeah, yeah, I liked him in that. Uh, Josh O'Connor, uh, he played young Charles on. Oh, I didn't watch the show. Young Prince but yes. Charles on um, The Crown. Yeah, uh, that's all I see him now with like the ears and. That that is pretty hard image to get out. Okay, yeah. so this movie was directed by Luca Guadagnino, who yep. did Call Me by Name, Suspiria. Yep. He also did Bones and All. Yeah. Okay. He also wrote yeah. it, and he also wrote it with uh, Justin uh, Creux. Uh, he's mm-hmm. worked on Ticklish. He's worked on Queer. He's like yeah. worked on a few different shows. Oh, yeah. So this is his first movie. Yeah, that's done. cool. Yeah. Uh, the elevator pitch for this one. Yeah. Okay, so we set scene. It's a tennis tournament. Yes. We get... Um, Two people playing off each other. Yeah, and just a challenger set. Challenger, no, yeah. Nothing so too level, major league. It's the level below the APT tour. Yeah. They're trying to... Uh, someone's trying to recapture their old form. The other guy is trying to get uh, enough spot, points to yeah, get to the... qualify for the US Open. Yeah. Turns out that these people both were friends. Yeah. Um, Mike Foss, who plays Art Donaldson, worst tennis name ever. Art. <laughs> get on, you Art. Go, Art. He... <laughs> He is, uh, he is married to the great Zendaya, who was the former flame of the other tennis Josh player, Reynolds, yeah, character. Um, which he plays, Patrick Zweig. Yeah, Patrick. Patrick Zweig with a uh, funky serve. Um, this movie is fantastic. Yeah, it's a tennis movie. Yeah, we were, we were really lucky to see the Brisbane premiere of this, and it was amazing. Yeah, really? and then, you know what? You know how you know it's good? You see it. You see it. Uh, at the Brisbane premiere, and then you go see it again when it (laughs) opens to the public. We loved it. Yeah. Like, Zendaya is a star. Everyone knows she's a star. Yeah. She produced this movie. This is probably her first, like, this is her movie. Like, you're not, you weren't initially here for anyone else other than Zendaya. I. So when they first muted this movie, it was supposed to be the coming out party for all three. But this oh. movie's uh, coming out party for Zendaya. Zendaya. This is this is her vehicle. The other two are still. I, I'm not gonna lie. I I like yeah. them. It's without, just Zendaya's. A... Without the other two being good, this movie wouldn't work. No, it works with all three because yeah. this is a very intimate. Like this. Yeah, it's a tripod movie. Yeah, you need all three to be yeah. great, and you need this whole like the idea to go with. Of this movie, it really comes down to the soundtrack for this movie, and it's yeah. done by the great Trent Reznor, who's I Nine Inch Owls fame. He's done. Oh, few, really? Yeah, he's done a few movies with um, uh, Luca. Yes, he did um, Bones and all as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah, and he was working on that, and he's like, oh. To preface this, not a fan of Bones at all. <laughs> yeah, so Trent Reznor and um, 
Atticus Ross, they work together. Yeah. And so they've done a lot of Fincher movies, and now they're doing a Luke, a Luke of Guadalupe movie. So they did, like, Social Network and... Yeah, yeah, Did Girl yeah. Drunk Tattoo, the I do, Girl. You're saying the music, but I would go the music and editing. I've never cared too yeah. much about editing in a movie, but this one relies heavily on both its music and editing. Well, this one time. goes back and forth, yeah. back and forth. So know? this takes an interesting thing where a lot of the time people don't like movies that go back and forth. Mm-hmm. But... For this movie, it works in a way because the story is kind of, I guess, simple in yeah. a sense that it's a love triangle. Yeah. And we get new information as time progresses yeah. in the story. And, it's, and it informs the, what's currently going on. Yes, in the tennis match. You bits and bits and pieces. You learn yeah. new bits about each one of them and, and how getting, they're unfolding. And you also get Easter eggs throughout the movie that come back yes. later. And for me personally, how it felt was like, the whole movie was a giant tennis game where you're just going back and forth, getting served new, yeah. like you're getting served new information. Yeah. You're getting this like and incredible, it, just and unfolding. In, in tennis, like you get like off speed, you get yes. fast. Like this movie serves you that, you know? Yeah. And then just when you think that something's going to happen, the music picks up. And yeah. Get, so the, yeah, they use that, music as a way when they, that, when hey, arguments are happening. There was, um, elements of this and I, I poked you in the movie theatre and I don't normally like to do this halfway through but I, I say to you I said to you oh, you know this movie um, music reminds me of May December Just, yes yeah. I know what you're talking about this is Bill on the Beach te- it's building tension you know yes. all the time yeah this movie and you were saying also this feels like an 80s movie oh, because it's yeah. it does have that kind of like over the top well, vibe to it almost like I, a I think it might be a theme because we, we were uh, there... really lucky to see uh, Fall Guy. Fall Guy, yeah. which will be next week's show. Which, which on next week's show, and that is a lot of 80s and that, yeah. you know? And so this movie, like, the, the dramas in the 80s, there's a, there's a movie called True Colours. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the great James Spader in it, and it's also oh. got John Cusack. Oh, yeah. And they're two friends that, um, you know, were friends in college, and then it turns out one of them's going for um, uh, a Congress spot, and then the other, other friend... Yes. Um, finds out that he's he's dodgy and he's oh. like simple story, and it just Unfolds, draws out. Yeah. yeah, just classic eighties fare. You know, like uh, hundreds of these movies. We saw Kevin Costner in these movies. Yep. We saw Gene Hackman in these movies. Like the like this. There's there's no difference yeah. for me than the great No Way Out, where Kevin Costner un- uncovers Gene Hackman's dodgy. Yeah, 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 the great yeah, yeah. Sean Young in, the, in yeah. the movie as well. But that was set around espionage and about Washington, D.C. Well, this is set around tennis. Yeah. And, yeah. We're, and, and I think we're getting like an 80s melodrama feel to this movie and, and it really, it totally it works, works for me. It works and I just keep wanting to praise Zendaya because I think she she's just so incredible in this movie. You gotta have a really strong female lead because you do have these like really uh, like um, strong like male leads and they have both, because it's a love triangle, all of it has to work in a way, you know? And Zendaya's character is very much um, kind of like she doesn't need anyone to love her. Yeah. She she loves tennis, and that's something that's amazing oh, about this movie. Yeah, she does. And that's the thing. This movie is about, in a weird way, loving tennis and the relationship of tennis. But the thing is, this movie, it, it's all on the three. Because all other than a couple of like tennis stars, you get uh, Jo Beth Williams, you get um, Mary, Mary Jo Beth, you get Brad Gilbert, you get the tennis commentator. There's not anyone of well known. No, 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 no. like, uh, um, There's not even real. Um, uh, Darnell, who is the chair umpire, is a friend of Zendaya's. You know, the guy that was the oh, chair umpire. Yeah, he's cool. friend of Zendaya's. But like, there's, these three are carrying the whole movie. Yeah, because we don't even have discussions with other characters. Yeah, there's just it's no just... other famous people in this movie yeah, whatsoever. and it's... Well, it doesn't even need to fame. It's just like there isn't... Yeah. You have to... It's an intimate relationship between these three. True, and yeah. they work so well. Yeah. And play off. And yeah, I just... And like you, you don't know who the bad guy is. I there love, is no bad. I love that like no, everyone... No, because everyone you, think, you think it's one person and then you're like... Two seconds later, you think it's, it's another. And know? then... And it's not that there's a bad person. It's just that they're all doing... I don't know. They're all just kind of out for themselves in a weird way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all love each other yeah, in a do. weird way. And do. somewhat love tennis in a, in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Some people love tennis more than others. <laughs> oh, true. Um, what are we going to give? Like, it's a definite watch. 
It's a hundred percent a watch. It's a hundred percent a watch. It's definitely it, an adult drama, yeah, by the way. A hundred percent like if you're thinking that you're gonna get, you know, shake it off uh Zendaya, it ain't. Oh, it, it, no. <laughs> undercover Casey, was that was that Oh Casey Undercover. Casey Undercover. If you think you're gonna get that Zendaya, you ain't. <laughs> You ain't getting the Mary Jane. Then. <laughs> you ain't getting. You, you ain't getting. Um, the greatest show. Uh, maybe I'm not chip and shout out. You're not getting that one either. You're getting New Zendaya. You're getting. Um. You're getting a femme fatale. Yeah. She is oh, a femme she's, fatale. Yeah. She, she. It's a new role for her, and I'm. I'm there for Loving it. Loving it. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely watch. Uh, rating Damn. for this one. I would give it a banger. It, is it, it? It just works as a movie. Is it? It's unique and it's different. No. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it a banger? No. Is it? Is it my championship belt on that? Is it? Yes, it is. It is. So we've got it. So yeah. we've got two now. I, do, I didn't know if there was going to be a movie that does it. But if there was, I think I was thinking it was going to be Challenges because I do have a deep yeah. love for Zendaya. But then I was like thinking, oh, but it's the guy from Birds and All, and I, I really didn't like that film. Yeah, like I so I was surprised. I wasn't a fan of his other work, you know. I, to be honest, I wasn't his fan. Like Suspiria is like a a, a horror movie. Yeah. You got Call Me by Name. I'm like that's me cancer because the cannibals in it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Like I wasn't expecting much to be honest, and and my expectations. Yeah, yeah. it's not a cookie cutter ending as well. It's not. No. It's, it's a. Um, yeah, I, it's, I had. It's, it's, I'm gonna be honest. It's definitely. Uh, I don't know. It. Everyone's gonna have the no. same feeling I did, but at the end, I yeah. had to. I, I had a. I was holding in my breath because yeah, yeah. of how intense it was. Well, I 100 percent agree. It's a banger. It's yeah. not my championship belt holder. I still like. I'm constantly You're a thinking Civil about, War guy. I'm constantly thinking about Civil War. You're talking again, your again, photojournalism. Again, again, that was a director that I didn't like. His other yeah, work. you wrote off. And, you know, so it just goes to show, never write off anyone, you know? No, yeah, someone could really surprise you. Yeah, it's their best works around the corner. And that's why we stand on a hill and defend Ridley Scott. And we also <laughs> stand on a hill and defend Mission Impossible 2. Uh, no, <laughs> that was you. <laughs> oh, no, John Woo. Mission Impossible 2. Oh, yeah, no, that's a movie. Yeah. That's a different anyway. story. But, yes. Uh, that's challenges. Uh, Hannah's Championship belt holder, mine, Civil War. So we've got those now. And we'll see if there's a movie... But uh, comes take it. to competition. Yeah. Uh, so challenges in cinemas everywhere now. Um, North America at least this week. So if you, yeah, it's good. To Australians get the releases before. Very America. rare. Yeah, it's very rare. Cool. But we, we'll take that. We didn't get um, the Guy to Richie's new movie. Uh, no, we didn't get that at all. We're not even getting a release date on streaming. So <laughs> we wait in the shadows. Yeah. That's... Apparently, it's getting like okay reviews. Like good. Uh, the next movie we're going to talk about today is Abigail. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's a vampire movie. Um, Scary vampire. This, so we're not giving anything away because the trailer says the girl's a vampire. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, a lot <laughs> of people. That's how it sets have, it up. A lot of people have said, "Why did they tell you in the trailer oh, she's a vampire? Because it's a big, of, a bit of a, a, a you're just waiting for it." But I think you have to get audiences in. Oh, it's a vampire movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. in the film, because it yeah. takes a while in the film. Yeah, okay, so this movie, the elevator pitch this one, a group of criminals uh, kidnap a daughter of a well-known so business guy. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's, re- he's re- a really so heavy sure guy. Yeah. And it turns out there's like six people that don't know each other, and it turns out that the girl they kidnap is actually a couple-year hunter vampire. Yeah. Um, okay, now, this movie... Is directed by the guys that did Scream. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Matt and the Tyler. Newest, the newest yeah. Ones, yeah. So they their credits include the uh, Scream, uh, Scream Six, and also the movie that we really love with Samara Reaving, Ready or Not. They did oh. that as well. Scream Six, I do. I did enjoy. For some they reason. they did the last couple of Screams. Yeah. So Scream Five and Six. Um, written by a guy called uh, Stephen Shields. Yes. He did The Hole in the Ground, The Hunted, and just like movies like that. Okay. So like, you know, little um, action comedy. Once, um, yes. You know, horror sort of things. Like um, the other writer, Gary Busick, he, he did Ready or Not as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, stars, Melissa Berra. Yeah. She was in the Screams. Screams. Yeah. She's not in the next Scream. She's not in Green Scream yes. 7. 
um, Dan Reasons. Stevens, who he's got two movies out at the moment. He is in King, King Kong. Kong. He's yep. in Kong Godzilla. Um, Alicia Ware, who plays Abigail, who's the vampire, tall girl girl. Yeah, yeah. She is in the musical Matilda. Oh, yes. yes. On Netflix. Um, the other people in here are Catherine Newton. Yeah. Um, Kevin Durant, you know, this guy is uh, that guy. He's in like tons of movies. He actually played um, one of the guys in Wolverine. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. What was his character in Wolverine? Uh, Fred Dukes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's in tons of movies. And um, Angus Cloud, this is his last yes. movie that he one finished of his, filming. Yeah, one of his... There's going to be another movie that's going to be released, but There's this one, this one in Sundance, filmed for yeah. a couple of weeks ago, a couple weeks before he died. And then um, Jean, Jean Carlo. Esper, uh, Ju- Esposito? Oh, Giancarlo Esposito, yeah. Not Esposito, he said, no, oh, no. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, it's Giancarlo. Giancarlo Esposito. Esposito. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different way of pronouncing it. Esposito. Oh. Um, there's, there's a guy that's in this. Now, he's in the credits. So, if you look up on the movie, but we're not going to give away that oh, this guy's no, in no, it. No, they have a, they have a special. Yeah. Um, look, this movie's fun. Yeah, uh, it, it it is it is very silly, and it, it is also this, very predictable. Yeah, and this, it's a, one of those movies that you lock people in a house, and then you watch people get taken the out of the time, and then it's got that mixture of the vampire and you know vampire yeah. lore, you know, cross. Yeah, they fire so sunlight. This, this movie follows almost Some. all no, but it follows like the horror movie tropes. Oh. And then what it does is that they try to debuff some of the, um, you know, some of the um, it does, monster. It, it's got horror, but it's also got thriller. Uh, it's I would thriller also trash. Also, some of it's comedy because it's mostly yeah, and, and, mostly, and it falls into the fact and that good thriller trash is comedy. Okay, it is. I wouldn't call it. It's really hard to call it thriller trash. Oh man, it is. Okay, it is when you when you have a toy girl, guess... when you have a toy girl, girl kidnapped. And she's got locked in with six criminals in a house, oh. and then she's killing him. No, that's sort of trash. That's really trash, baby. I just you know what it got me was how it turns the tables because the little girl. Oh yeah. The little girl. Why she? You know what? She, but the thing is, uh, the little girl. She's she's just having fun because she's a ballerina. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's like, she's not just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. get these people. I'm gonna get these people with. Style. Yeah, and then she's like, she has the puppeteering nature. So like, some uh, vampire law is like you can puppeteer yeah. people and stuff like that. So she, yeah, so she's she, one of her. There's like different things that um, there's some just like, oh wow, I didn't, uh, I didn't see that coming. But it, it, if you love these like classic, just it's a horror comedy. Yeah, just some dumb people making dumb decisions. It's just a lot of fun. Here. Yeah, like it, it's definitely not for the auteurs in our, you know. You know, yeah, because think... now, now with horror at the moment, everyone's becoming like a connoisseur. Or yeah, such. This but is, like this horror is supposed to be well, this Hor- is well made. Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna say it's not. It's well horror made. Horror's supposed to be fun, and this is fun. Yeah, yeah, this like is still, this is like, still fun. Like, like the first Halloween, like the when they did the reboot, that was good. That was yeah. good horror. But the last one was silly. This oh, is not. Is. This has got. It's got funny bits, but it's also got horror bit and it's also got thriller bits it's ridiculous and that's when that's when those movies really work and just like every horror movie it gets really ridiculous at the end and yeah, yeah. Like oh, you gotta, you gotta, I'm there for it you gotta take it uh, what would um, you say watch for this one I uh, for fans of origin I'd still go watch yeah well, I'd say if you're a fan of vampires you, this is a movie for you yeah 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 I, I'll really like if it if you don't like these things stay away yeah it's definitely Th- there's some th- yeah. there are some like oh, it, it's definitely like a movie with like heaps of people just laughing at the screen, you know, yeah, yelling at the screen. Don't run there! Like it's so many silly things when people do things by themselves and go. I know. And then they're like, a hundred percent a trope. When you're like, when, when and you're, it's split up into teams, you know. Every time, oh my God. every horror movie, yeah. every time, and yeah. we all know what happens. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, rating for this one. Uh, what are you feeling? I think it's played on my phone. Yeah, I played on my phone. I I think it's a very well made horror movie. I just I think it's, it's bordering I, on a I I, I think it's bordering uh, on a golf club. It does, but it, I think it just follows too many tropes. Because at the start, it builds. It takes too long to build. You know, to like, the initial. Of, a couple of people asked if we should add half ratings to our our things. We we can we can create funny names for it but like this is probably like the perfect example of like a two and a half it's a bordering golf clap yeah. slash i played on my phone yeah i know what you're feeling maybe you know 
every time you pick up your phone, you get yelled at by a golfer. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's not, yeah. Ah, that's You'll good leave, stuff. Go oh, we should walk shop. Board. Yeah, walk shop that. Yeah, get, the the from, get the riders anyway, from Abigail. Anyway, that's a two stars here. <laughs> two stars, yeah. A watch for any horror lovers of their pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, a lot of people go when we say, oh, it's two stars, like, it's, it's negative. It's two out of five. It's still a pass. Yeah. It's, you know? One is like, please stay steer clear. If you yeah. want to, you can. If we gave it zero, please don't ever go watch it. Well, if we say miss, no, every, everything, everyone gets be one. Honest. Let's be honest. If we say miss, we mean miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we say watch and give it two, we still mean it's good, but it's like yeah, we not, had fun watching it's not it. The best of yeah, the yeah. Best. Like, let's be honest. Golf like, the, clap is like we're talking like it had something going for it. Ne- next week, um, we're gonna review a movie, and that is a miss. And oh, I can't give a score low enough. There's a movie that we're gonna review next yeah, week. Yeah, okay. Like, it's we won't just... talk about it, but yes. Yeah, well, that's today's show. Um, tomorrow, the great movie news. Um. Clickbait. Uh, what's what's going on with your clickbait Surprise. this week? We'll oh well, out. well, okay. Um, don't forget, we're currently running um, cinema experience. So every second week, we're going to highlight experience. The first one is going to be seats. Yeah, seats. Yeah, seats. Yeah, and then we're all all we're doing in the next every fortnight is building up to creating the great cinema experience. So get in your Cinema experiences, and uh, we'll add it to our list, and we'll collate for the great cinema experience tournament. Thanks, everyone, for watching or listening. Uh, movie news tomorrow. Uh, AFI Top 100. Yeah. Misfits. Misfits. Um, we're, we're talking, and we're, like the last couple haven't been great in the AFI Top 100. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where it's just like all bangers, though. Yeah, well... Uh, sorry, the Wild Bunch is called. It's not, the Wild Bunch. Yeah, Wild Bunch. Um, the next couple are Modern Times, which is uh, Charlie Chapman, and All the President's Men, which is one okay, of my faves. <laughs> so, and then Forrest Gump. So, yeah, there's, there's a couple, couple oh, of good ones so. coming out. In the Heat of the Night is also. Yes! And it's one of my Silence of the Lambs. So there's a couple yes. of different ones coming up. So if you haven't been listening to the AFI, you can catch up anytime on Spotify, Apple yep. Podcasts, YouTube. Wherever you get your podcast is on every one, Google and, and Samsung. Touch, yeah. yeah, it's on all of them. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, that is my great co-host, Hannah. Uh, long live cinema. It's, it's in a good spot. Um, I'm enjoying movies at the moment. Yeah, they're doing well. Yeah, well, even though Jerry Seinfeld said cinema's dead. Uh, <laughs> says Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> long live cinema. Uh, it's not dead. It's still alive and kicking. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Until tomorrow, when we catch up for movie news, it's bye for now. Bye.